Well, we welcome you to Bible Baptist Church. I'm Pastor Stan Slaybaugh. This is my wife, Kathy, and uh, we appreciate you watching this video. We want to introduce you to Bible Baptist Church. We're an uh, independent, old-fashioned, Bible-believing Baptist Church here in Grove City, Ohio. Uh, the church has been here uh, for nearly 70 years ministering here in the community. And uh, we'd like to tell you a little bit about our church today. We begin uh, gathering together Sunday mornings at 9.30 uh, for Sunday school classes and Bible classes. We have a clean, well-staffed nursery as well as a toddler class. And then um, we continue on with our Sunday school classes. We start with four and five-year-olds and go on through first through sixth grade, um, boys and girls, and have some wonderful teachers. And the children are learning wonderful truths about the Lord. Then, of course, we go from 7th to 12th grade with our youth department, and they meet as well on Sunday morning, but they also have other activities that they get to do and participate in. They go to camp every summer. They go to a youth conference every year, and it's an exciting team program that they run. We also have a college and career class that we just began a few weeks ago, and uh, that's off to a good start. And then we have a home builders class, which is a married couples class, and that meets also at 9.30 on Sunday morning. And then the rest of the adults are in here for the pastor's class during the Sunday school time. Then our morning service follows at 10.30 Sunday morning. And that's always an exciting service. I love our church services. Um, we have wonderful pianists and we have um, an orchestra. It just creates a very lively and spirited atmosphere in our services. We also have vocalists and soloists and a full church choir. And the music, of course, is always designed to prepare our hearts for the preaching of the Word of God. Uh, the centrality, everything in the service always points to the preaching of God's Word and us responding to what God would say to us. Then we meet back again on Sunday evening. That's at 5.30 on Sunday night. That's a completely different service, uh, same choir, and instrumentalist and orchestra, but different music and uh, different songs, a different solo and a different message from the Word of God. But Sunday night services are always exciting as well. And then our midweek service is at 6.30 on Wednesday nights. Yes, we have children's clubs that meet. Um, the Joyful Juniors meet, that's from ages four years old through first grade. And they learn some wonderful character traits they sing, do some crafts. It's a wonderful time for them to get together. And then we have the Glow Club. They meet um, downstairs and they are from second grade through sixth grade. And they sing usually once a month, um, missionary stories. It's, a, it's just a wonderful uh, opportunity for your children to grow in Christ. And we always have a missionary letter read. We support over 90 missionaries here at Bible Baptist Church. And then we have a prayer guide as well to help us in our personal prayer time that we pass out each Wednesday evening. And then the Bible study uh, on Wednesday night. And so it's a great service right in the middle of the week. And it always seems to be just what we need. Thursday night is our recovery program. For 12 years now, we've had a faith-based recovery program here at Bible Baptist Church. And on Thursday night, Bridge to Recovery meets from 6.30 to 8 p.m. And we'd invite you out for that on Thursday evening. And then I, I want you to know we have a daily radio broadcast called Words to Encourage. It's heard on 91.5 FM here in Columbus. And that's at 9.45 a.m. Monday through Friday and then they repeat the program at 11.15 in the evening. And you can also pick that broadcast up if you go to iTunes or iHeartRadio has a podcast and you subscribe to that and then you can listen at your convenience if you don't hear it when it's on the air. But I hope that'll be a blessing to you as well. And well, we appreciate you watching the video uh, and learning a little bit about Bible Baptist Church. Um, but you know, coming to church is probably maybe the second most important thing in your life because there is something more important. And the most important thing that we can ever know is to know for sure that if we die, we'll go to heaven. And I'd like to share you some good news from the Bible about how we can know 
a hundred percent sure that if we die, we'd go to heaven. And if you're interested in that and you'd like to hear more about that, I would urge you to continue watching here in a moment. Well, thank you for continuing to watch the video. As I mentioned, the most important thing that we can ever know is to know for certain that when we die, we'll go to heaven. And obviously, if anyone was giving out guarantees, <clears throat> excuse me, about that, uh, you wouldn't need my guarantee necessarily, and no offense, but I wouldn't want your guarantee. But if God was giving out a guarantee about going to heaven, I'd be interested in what God had to say about it. And the good news is, in the Bible, uh, in the book of Romans, God gives us four simple things that he says if we'll understand them and believe them, we can have his guarantee of going to heaven one day. And I'm going to share those four things with you just briefly. The first thing that God wanted want us to know is that all of us have sinned in his sight. Romans chapter 3 and verse 10 says, As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. A righteous person is someone who has not sinned. And God says there's no one like that. In fact, in verse 23 of Romans 3, God says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. All have sinned. Every one of us have sinned against God. I've sinned against God. You've sinned against God. All of us have. There's no one who can say, I've never sinned against God. That's the first thing that God wants us to understand. We have sinned against Him. We have broken God's law. The second thing that God would want us to know is that there's a price or a penalty to pay for that sin against him. In Romans chapter 6 and verse number 23, the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, the first part of that verse is where we'll focus on because it says the wages of sin is death. We know what wages are. It's what you work for. It's what your earnings are. Uh, when people used to get paychecks, uh, it would say wages and earnings. In other words, if we went to God and said, give me my paycheck, give me what I deserve for my sin against you, God says you deserve death. And that death in the Bible means a separation. That's really what death is. When our loved ones die, the reason it is so hurtful and difficult for us is we're separated from them. Cannot see them anymore, cannot talk to them anymore, cannot be with them anymore. And this separation, this death, is a separation from God. It's an eternal death, the Bible calls it, sometimes a spiritual death or a second death. In other words, it's a separation from God, and the only place that will be separated from God forever is a place called hell. And that's where each of us would deserve to go. Hell's a terrible place. It's real. And it's a place of torment. It's a place of fire. It's a place where we'll be punished for our sin against God. And God would be just because we're guilty. And he'd be just to sentence us to hell. But the good news, listen, and I know so far that's not good news, but it's truthful news. But here's the good news. The third thing God wants us to know is that he loves us. And he loved us so much, he sent his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, into the world to die on a cross and pay the wages of sin for us. The Bible says in Romans 5 and verse 8 that God commended or he proved his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. You could read that he died on our behalf. Jesus Christ was the son of God. He is the Son of God. And being the Son of God, the Bible says, He never committed a single sin. That He was tempted at all points, just like we are, yet without sin. Now think about this. If Jesus never committed a sin, would He have to pay the wages of sin? No, He would not. But the wages of sin is death. And Jesus Christ went to the cross on Calvary and they nailed him there, and he suffered, and he bled, and he died. He paid the wages of sin. But it wasn't his sins. He didn't have any. 
Well, whose sins was Jesus paying for? That's right, he was paying for your sins and for mine. You see, every sin that I've ever committed, and even sin I haven't committed yet, but he knows I will, Jesus Christ took those sins and he put those sins on himself. And he said, God, punish me instead of staying slave on. And he took your sin the same way and he put them on himself. <coughs> Excuse me. And he said, God, punish me instead of put your name there. He died for you. The agony, the pain, the torment that you and I would have suffered in hell one day for our sin. Jesus suffered for us when he died on that cross. He was our substitute. He took our place. He died for us. In fact, when you read Romans 5, 8, you can put your name in there. When it says, but God commended his love toward us, I would put my name in there. I would say, but God commended his love toward Stan, and that while Stan was yet a sinner, Christ died for Stan. You see, believing Jesus died for the sins of the world doesn't get you to heaven. That's just believing a fact of history. You have to believe Jesus Christ died for your sins, that he took your place, that he was your substitute, and you have to believe him. Now, after he died on the cross, three days later, resurrection. God raised him from the dead. And God was saying, I'm accepting my son's payment for the sins of mankind. And fourthly, lastly, that's what God says each of us must do. That we must, by faith, accept Jesus Christ and his payment for our sin as our hope for heaven. And he'll give us the gift of eternal life and we shall be saved. Romans 6.23 that we read earlier, <clears throat> the Bible says, for the wages of sin is death, but... The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Now, it's interesting. God talks about eternal life, and he doesn't use the word wage. He uses the word gift. Well, there's a difference between a wage and a gift. Wages must be worked for. Wages must be earned, but gifts are given. Gifts are given because someone else has already worked for it. When it was your birthday or Christmas, your parents would figure out what you wanted or what you needed, and they would get, get in the car and drive through the traffic and find a place to park and go to the store, and they'd find what you wanted or what they think you needed, and then they'd buy it, and they, they'd wait in line, and they'd purchase it, then get back in the car, and then drive home through the traffic and get home, and then they'd put it down in front of you and say, happy birthday to you. And, it, and what did you do? You didn't get your wallet out and say, what do I owe you? No, you received it. It was yours. But you know you got it free because someone else paid for it. Because mom and dad did all the work. Well, God said his gift to us is eternal life. And yet so many people, when you ask them, how do I have eternal life? They start telling you what you got to do. Well, you have to do this or do that or go to church or keep the commandments or get baptized. And I said, but wait, if I have to do all that, how come God said it was a gift? You see, folks, you don't spell salvation, D-O. You spell it D-O-N-E, done. It's not what we do. It's what already has been done for us. And so God said his gift to us is eternal life. Well, if it's God's gift to us, then it's already paid for. Well, who paid for it? That's right. Jesus Christ paid for it when he died on the cross. That's why the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And that's why the Bible ends up in Romans 10 and verse 13, when God says, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you'll call on Jesus, that's prayer. And you say, Jesus, I know I'm a sinner. I know that I deserve to pay for my sin in hell. But I believe Jesus, you died on the cross and you paid my sin debt for me. I believe you rose again the third day. And I now trust you. Trust in the Bible simply means you put your weight on it. I have my weight in this chair because I believe it'll hold me up and I won't fall down to the ground. And if you put all your weight on Jesus Christ and you trust him alone to give you the gift of eternal life, to forgive you of your sin, 
God says you shall be saved. Now, He didn't say might be saved. He didn't say may be saved. He didn't say hope to be saved. He said you shall be saved. And my friend, that's the guarantee. Not from me, but in writing from God. That if you'll call upon the Lord and you'll ask Him to save you and you'll trust Him alone, He'll give you the gift of eternal life and promise you a home in heaven one day. Now, if you will pray and you ask Christ to save you, we'd like to know about it. And if you would contact us, we'd like to give you some material uh, that would help you to grow in your Christian life. And we certainly can recommend a church that will help you to get started on the right foot as you walk with the Lord. All right. Thanks for listening today. If we can help you in any other way, please feel free to contact us. Uh, our phone number and my email address is on our website. That's bbcgrovecity.org. And we hope to see you again soon. God bless you.